You're watching Fox Sports Net. The Georgia Bulldogs have made their way to Lexington and Rupp Arena. Their last win inside this historic building was in 1985. College basketball dynasties are synonymous with the UCLA Bruins in their 11 national championships. But the University of Kentucky can also stake claim to that moniker with seven national titles, 42 SEC championships, and over 1,800 victories, which is most in college basketball. Jim Herrick was instrumental in one of those Bruin titles. And tonight, Herrick and the University of Georgia, off to their best start in five years, travel to Kentucky in hopes of shaking off the bluegrass jinx. 16 straight losses at Rupp Arena. Two wins in just 52 games in Lexington. Can the dogs possibly take a bite out of that wildcat streak? The national championship banners of the Kentucky Wildcats hang in the rafters of Rump Arena, a reminder of the excellence and tradition of this proud basketball program. And tonight, the Kentucky Wildcats, ranked eighth in the country, will host the Georgia Bulldogs, who are off to their best start since 1997. And hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Neal, and welcome to some SEC basketball on a Wednesday night. I'm joined once again by my partner, Barry Booker. And Barry, it's been since 1986 that Kentucky lost an opening game in SEC play. That happened last Saturday against Mississippi State for the first time since 86. What's the mindset of this Wildcat team tonight as they get ready to face Georgia? Well, Kentucky is fired up. They can't wait to get on the court again to take on anybody. And they're happy to see Georgia come walking through these doors, get a chance to get the taste of that Mississippi State game out their mouths. Well, speaking of Georgia, they're off to the best start since 1997. The man who coached them that year was Tubby Smith. Ezra Williams has really been the go-to guy for Jim Herrick so far. Yeah, Ezra Williams doing a great job putting points on the board, shooting the three-pointer extraordinarily well, and Ezra does a nice job with the rebounding as well, and he's really going to have to have to do the job shooting the basketball because Georgia may have trouble scoring against Kentucky's physical front line. Well, this Kentucky team leads the Southeast Eastern Conference in scoring 85 points per game. The main catalyst, a person that may win the National Player of the Year when it's all said and done, Tayshaun Prince. His coach loves his game right now. Yeah, Tayshaun Prince, everybody's All-American. Tayshaun playing extraordinarily well for the Cats, scoring outstandingly over 18 a game. And he had a tough time, though, at Mississippi State. Didn't shoot the ball well in the second half. Kentucky had trouble attacking that zone defense from Mississippi State. They're going to see it again tonight against Georgia. Georgia. We'll see if they'll attack it tonight instead of standing around like they did Saturday. Georgia hasn't won in this building since 1985. Barry, their only other win in the city of Lexington came in 1923. So to say it's an uphill battle would be an understatement. But we're all ready for basketball. Number three. Hey, it's Andre and the Dogs, Prince and the Cats. Thanks on SEC TV. Advanced Auto Parts, we believe in doing it yourself. So we made this commercial ourselves. Yeah, we're rolling. Go ahead. Three, two, two one. one. Robbie, can, can you come down here for a second? We are so getting a raise. It's prices, not prizes. We don't, we don't have prizes. Do we have prizes? So, Doctor, hmm? you've been studying the effects of Red Bull for months. What exactly have you discovered? Energy boundaries and biorhythmic fluctuations can make it mm. difficult to maintain a baseline rating of muscular contraction and mm. transmittable impulses. Of course, you need mm. the oxyribonuclear acidity and orbital phases of mm. gravitational fluctuations can indeed result in a fibromyalgic Red Bull type of situational relevance as well. But we've calibrated the amount of available mm. regenerative mm. uh, tolerances. Can you say that in English? Simple little man. Red Bull gives you wings. The Southeastern Conference. SEC Basketball, the standard of excellence.
Kentucky Wildcats being introduced to the fans inside Rupp Arena as the Wildcats get set to open up their SEC home schedule tonight against the Georgia Bulldogs. Dave Neal and Barry Booker, glad you could join us. And here's a look at tonight's starting lineups and some interesting matchups tonight, the biggest of which will be who will be able to slow down Tayshawn Prince. And, well, it appears that Jim Herrick likes what he sees in Chris Daniels. Chris Daniels is a very athletic big man, not a big man muscular wise, but certainly has some size with him and quickness to match up with Tayshawn Prince. Jules Kamara, Gerald Fitch, Keith Bogans, Cliff Hawkins, Rashad Wright, Ezra Williams, Jarvis Hayes, Stevie Thomas round out the Georgia Bulldogs lineup. There's Jim Herrick in that huddle talking to his troops. He's been down this road before, and that is going into hostile territory. Trying to pull off an upset. They almost did it a year ago. As a matter of fact, Jim Herrick's first season, they almost did it. Jim Herrick's team was very undermanned that particular year. But uh, he didn't seem too worried about it in terms of his team being ready to play. He thinks his team is ready for the challenge. They're good enough, especially in their starting lineup. That first five is very solid. They match up very well against Kentucky as far as size and strength goes. In their first five, it's the bench where Georgia might get into trouble. Meanwhile, Tubby Smith on the other side, his fifth year here. And 119 and 36 as the Wildcats head coach. His 11th season overall as a head coach, 243 victories. Herrick's numbers, well, they're quite impressive, including a national championship, but that was at UCLA's third year as the Bulldogs head coach. One game over 500, but the future looks bright for the Bulldogs. Series history is slanted one way as Kentucky looks for their 100th victory against the Georgia Bulldogs in this series that dates back a long, long time. Georgia's only other win in the city of Lexington, as we mentioned, other than 1985, was in 1923. <laughs> That's incredible, and Kentucky has those kinds of numbers against most of the Southeastern Conference. It's dominated play in basketball in this league. Bob Donato, Pat Adams, and Ted Hillary are our officials today. Kentucky gets possession to open up the basketball game. Here's Cliff Hawkins. Bogans, who has been struggling, struggling mightily this season, turns it over. Here's Hayes. He's a flyer. An offensive foul to start the game for Jarvis Hayes. Keith Bogans defensively drew the charge. A great D by Ezra Williams and Jarvis Hayes combining to take it away from Keith Bogans. Bogans did a nice job hustling back, setting up, taking the charge, getting possession back for Kentucky. Wildcats are most effective in the open floor. It's that half-court deep offense that has really been a problem spot for them, and in particular last Saturday. Here's Prince inside. Got great position. Nice job setting up down low. Caught the ball in the lane, went right around Chris Daniels for the easy lay-in. Georgia really needs to get off to a good start to have a chance in this ball game tonight. This crowd really into the game early on. It'll be Georgia basketball with 26 seconds on the shot clock. Ezra Williams, 17 points a game for the Bulldogs. Off the inbounds pass. Hayes misses the jumper. The outlet up ahead to Fitch. Layup. It is good. Count the basket. A three-point opportunity. And that's two fouls on Jarvis Hayes already had the charge earlier. As Tayshawn Prince kicking it way down the court. Good job pitching it ahead. Fitch with the easy layup. Jarvis Hayes coming over, trying to block the shot. It's caught him across the head. So Fitch steps to the free throw line. Fitch, a 71% free throw shooter, converts the three-point opportunity. Fitch averaging just shy of eight points a game, but he's second on the team in rebounds. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, for a little guy like that, guard him to step in there. The turnover by Kentucky, taken away by Hawkins. Now Fitch has it back to Hawkins. Cliff fires. In and out, rebound to the Bulldogs. A little bit sloppy here early on. Georgia looks like they're a, a little bit lethargic as we start this ball game. You'd think they'd be really pumped up to come in here and play in Rupp Arena in front of all these folks. Rashad Wright, averaging only eight points a game, knocks down his first field goal attempt. 
Georgia finally getting going. Kind of weathering these uh, first few minutes of the game. Like the crowd really kind of sitting on their hands, a little bit quiet here early on. Here's Bogans on Daniels. Nowhere to go, gives it back to Kamara. His 16-foot jumper is good. Good job by Keith Bogans. Not forcing that shot, pitching it out to Kamara, who knocked out that jumper. Five-point Kentucky lead. Kentucky scoring 85 points a game. And Hayes responds with a three. Jarvis Hayes struggled against Vanderbilt. Shooting the basketball, 0 for 5 from behind the arch, is 4 of 13 overall, but knocks down that field goal. Jarvis Hayes is not bashful. Bogus misses his first field goal attempt. Mitch thought about it, goes inside. Bogans, guarded by Hayes, will kick it to Hawkins. Good ball movement by the Wildcats and a foul against the dog. And that'll go against Chris Daniels. A great job by Kentucky. Prince with the rebound. They moved Thousand it around, swung it around the court, able the to get the good scored. shot inside from Kamara. Kamara will step to the line for the catch to shoot two. Kamara, of course, missed all of last season after breaking school policy. Took a red shirt year. Came back bigger and stronger, actually. And he thought that he is one of the guys that had NBA written all over him, but off to a slow start this season. Makes his way to the starting lineup. Four points now for Jules, 6'11 junior out of Senegal. Hayes, strong to the basket. Jarvis Hayes hurt his knee back late in November. Hurt his right knee, had to wear a brace through several games, missed a couple of games, but now he's back and you can see the explosiveness that he has going to the basket. Looks like he's not worried about that knee very much anymore. Georgia daring Kamara to take the jump shot again, but Jules gave it up. Here's Tayshawn Prince, guarded by Daniels. Steps inside, little runner is good. So smooth. Slick move by Tayshawn, putting it on the floor, getting in the lane. Chris Daniels trying to pressure him out there, but Tayshawn handles it so well. Rebound to Bogans. Tried to sneak a pass into Jules Kamara. Here's Georgia attacking Kentucky's press. Once you beat that press, you need to take it right at the basket, get that defense scrambling, and Joe Jarvis Hayes did exactly that, took it to the hole, and here's a guy that can take it to the hole as well. Tayshaun Prince, excellent putting the ball on the floor, staying under control, dropping in that little seven-footer. Hawkins in the corner to Bogans. Georgia in that zone. Prince gets hammered and will step to the free throw line. And that'll go against Chris Daniels, and that is his second foul early in this basketball game. Georgia can't afford to lose some big bodies inside. Yeah, Daniels with two, Hayes with two. With two players on the Georgia front line in foul trouble. Prince misses the free throw, takes out a 70% free throw shooter. For the pass, Checking Carew, in for Kentucky, Rashad Carew, the 6'3 freshman out of College Park, Georgia. By way of Oak Hill Academy in Virginia, he will replace Keith Bogans for a moment. Prince, second free throw, off the mark. A rebound taken by Daniels. Good matchup at the point tonight. Hawkins and Wright. Amazing quickness from Cliff Hawkins. Aggressive defense that time, a little too aggressive. Hawkins incredible quickness and Rashad Wright a contrast to that he has excellent quickness of course But he stays under control not a guy that penetrates in the lane the way you'll see Hawkins do it when Kentucky has possession on offense So an interesting matchup at the point Adam Childs checks in as Hayes knocks the two down And a foot on the line. I told you he's not bashful. If he's got a look at the basket He's gonna let it go Fitch not bashful from the corner. He knocks it's down the three-pointer. Caruth caught holding Ezra Williams. First foul on Caruth. And 15-57 to go in the opening half from Lexington and Rupp Arena. Back and forth we go. Kentucky leads the dogs by five. 
Can a bank help you catch the spirit of the Southeastern Conference? It can if it's Regions and Morgan Keegan. Because throughout the Southeast, you'll find more than 680 convenient locations providing greater service to our customers. So whether your team is just going for bragging rights or a shot at the national title, only one financial team has the strength to be there with you. Regions and Morgan Keegan, official sponsor of the SEC Championship. National Geographic brings the spirit of adventure and exploration to life with the introduction of the new National Geographic Channel. Tune in and be a part of the continuing story of life on Earth. Every day on the new National Geographic Channel. See the National Geographic Channel on Comcast Digital Cable. Call today to order. Taylor Pre-Owned asks the question, why buy a rental pre-owned car when you can own a Taylor Pre-Owned? Answer, we service what we sell and they don't. That's why 93% of our customers would buy from Taylor again. And for a limited time, all Taylor Pre-Owned autos come with a five-year, 60,000-mile warranty. Question, how can we do this? Because we service what we sell and they don't. Better cars, better prices, better service. And a five-year, 60,000-mile warranty. Augusta and North Augusta. Fox Sports Net. Kentucky Wildcats lead the Georgia Bulldogs by five. Rupp Arena, 23,000 on hand once again. Barry, you played here when you were in Vanderbilt. What's it like to come into this place? It's hard, man. I've never <laughs> won in this, as Vanderbilt has never won in the 25 years that this place has been in existence. There's so many teams that have had a tough time in here because the crowd gets all over you. It's a test of your faith to come into this place. You really have to, have to question what you believe when you come in here. If you only think you're pretty good, you're going to get blown out by 30. You got to know you're good to come in here to handle the cash. Georgia with some confidence right now. 12 and 2 start this season. Down five early. Georgia opened up the SEC season with a win over Vanderbilt at home. The rebound pulled out of there by Kentucky and Chuck Hayes. Here's Childs. Over to Hayes. Got it. Great looking shot from Chuck Hayes, the freshman out of Modesto, California. Kentucky doing a nice job attacking the zone defense that Georgia is showing, moving the basketball around, shooting it with confidence. Chuck Hayes knocking out the wing jumper there. Kentucky two of four behind the arc to open up the game. Ezra Williams nowhere to go. Nice pass though. The three-point play. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Aggressive move to the basket by Chris Daniels. Two fouls already, so he has to be a little bit careful. Doesn't want to pick up his third this early. How nice about the job pass laying it in? <laughs> From Ezra Williams. Yeah, Ezra was Ezra was trapped in the air. Carew jumped out on him, was about to block that shot. Ezra shoveled it off to Chris Daniels. Daniels gets the deuce. And at the other end, Chuck Hayes dropping it home. Nice pass from Childs. And then Hayes knocking out that jumper. Kentucky playing with confidence early. Daniels missed a three-point opportunity, but the offensive rebound winds up in Steve Thomas's hands. So Georgia ends up with a four-point play. Yeah, Georgia leads the Southeastern Conference in offensive rebounding. They get 15 a game. Nice job on the boards there by Thomas. Carew knocks down the two. Kentucky really shooting the basketball with confidence. They get open looks at the basket. They are not hesitating. There is just letting it rip. Six-point Wildcat lead. Here's Thomas. Turns, fires. Couldn't get the roll. Daniels, the offensive rebound. Another three-point opportunity for Daniels. Uh, these Wildcats better block out. Tubby Smith moving down this bench, looking for somebody to get out there and get a rebound. You would think Marquise Estelle would be that guy. Chris Daniels using his quickness. Thomas missing the jumper. But Kentucky, look at number 50, just sliding in there. Nobody got a body on him. He just looks for the basketball, finds where it's coming off, goes to it, and lays it back in. Daniels having a nice season, quietly being very, very productive for Jim Herrick's team. 6'8", 230, sophomore out of Carrollton, Georgia. Last year averaged two points, now averaging about nine a game. To the corner it goes, Hayes misses this jumper. Daniels 
Had his hands on it, knocked out of there. Georgia back with it. Here's Wright. Up ahead it comes to Hayes. As Jonas Hayes gets the layup. Jonas Hayes knocked the basketball away on the defensive end and ran the court very well and got the easy layup. Georgia in man to man right now. Georgia pulls within one, and that'll get Tayshawn Prince off the bench. Nice runner from Rashad Carruth. Tough shot by Carruth. Ran along that baseline, able to get under control enough to knock out that hook shot. Ezra Williams buries a three. Barry, we are back in four. <laughs> There are some offensive players on the court tonight. Georgia, a very good offensive club, and Kentucky, especially at home, explosive. <laughs> Kentucky answer. Daniels gets the basket, and then steps on the sideline. It'll still be Georgia basketball. Eric Daniels puts Kentucky up by a basket. Dave, this is a very difficult shot. Rashad Carruth moving along the baseline. You don't have the backboard to use to bank this shot in. Carruth shooting over the 6'7", Jonas Hayes, able to float that one-hander up over the rim softly and get the deuce. Carruth was the man who had a huge game against Duke. Scoring 19 points, 14 of those in the first half. He knocked down seven of 10 field goals that game. It was held to just three points against Mississippi State on Saturday in 11 minutes of action. Jonas Hayes turns, fires, didn't get the roll. Back come the Wildcats, Cliff Hawkins. Tony Cole checks in for Georgia along with Mike Patrick. Inside, Prince with a jam. Nice pass by Eric Daniels down low. Got it in there around the defense, and Tayshawn slamming it home. Barry, Georgia shooting 64% in this game. <laughs> Kentucky up over 70%. Ezra Williams didn't get it to go. Shoot 64% and you're down by four. It's incredible. <laughs> Caruth, another runner. This one doesn't go down. Loose basketball. Tie up on the floor. Last touch by Williams. It'll be Kentucky basketball. Great hustle by Chuck Hayes going down the floor after the basketball. And Tayshawn Prince working hard inside, setting the screen, and look at him post up. The lanky, slender guy using his body, shoving off on Chris Daniels, catching it down low and slamming it. Good job by Tayshawn getting position down low. Tayshawn pump fake, steps to the free throw line off the back of the iron. Daniels came flying in over the top. And he'll be whistled for the foul. Now is on Eric Daniels. That'll be his first. That's his the first. Both these teams very aggressive going after the offensive rebounds. The shooting incredible. <laughs> is that a case of bad defense? In some cases, yeah. We've seen some, some easy shots, but we've also seen some very difficult shots go down. So I think that those uh, shooting percentages will come down as this game goes on. The erratic Tony Cole runs the point. He has it number four. Kentucky sliding in the little zone defense. Williams had it stripped out of his hands. Last touch by Ezra. It'll be Kentucky basketball with 11.52 to play in the opening half. It's been quite entertaining from Rupp Arena. But Kentucky leads the Bulldogs by four. Back after this timeout. Sure, the holidays are over, but it's not too late to open one of these. The Compact Rosario 1700T Notebook. It's got hot swappable drives and the incredibly fast mobile Intel Pentium 3 Processor M for just $1349. Plus, we'll give you a carrying case and an extra battery free. So give yourself one last holiday present to open before this deal closes. Call 1-888-271-1826 to get yours now. You ready, Jimmy? No. Why pay child support with the Pro Athlete Fraternity Test? Oh, DeMarco Farr. John Sally. John Sally. Comedy commentary highlights the best damn sports show, period. Let me win. 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 
But if I cannot win. But if I cannot win. But if I cannot win. But if I cannot win. Let me be brave. Let me be brave. Let me be brave. Let me be brave in the attempt. The Special Olympics. The Southeastern Conference. Privacy training for life. Well, we're starting kind of over. We lost a lot of guys. Uh, we have mostly a sophomore group of basketball players, but I like their athletic ability. They play well together. Uh, we're changing from an inside team to an outside team. Uh, also, uh, I think we're going to extend our defense a little bit and hopefully fast break a little bit more than we have in the past. Always been a fast break coach, but we've never had the opportunity since I've been there. And now, really like my point guards, Richard Wright and Tony Cole, can get it up and down the floor a little bit for us. And, Hopefully we'll make the adjustment there, but we're young and uh, depth and inexperienced and a little small, but other than that, uh, uh, can we sustain things? Those are questions you need to ask as you go through, and that's why you play the non-league and see where you need to make adjustments. Jim Herrick's thoughts on this Georgia team, and I was just looking at the complete rosters for both of these teams, and added up 28 guys between the two clubs, only three seniors among those 28. It's hard to get a senior. And two of those uh, three were walk-ons at one time. Tayshawn Prince, the only one who wasn't a walk-on of that group. And a whistle underneath, and a foul, I think, will wave off the basket. A foul against Kentucky, I believe. Yeah. Hayes over the back, going after the rebound. That was on Chuck Hayes. That'll be his first. That'll be the first on Hayes. So we take a look at the, the shot going up and watch number 44. Not much contact at all there. Steve Thomas maybe got touched a little bit on the back, but not much contact there as that ball came squirting out. Let him play. <laughs> as long as I'm sitting over here and the action's going on out there, I agree. Let him play. <laughs> Under 10 on the shot clock. There's Patrick gets a screen from Thomas, kicks it over to Hayes. He spots, fires. Missed the three, rebound pulled out of there by Rashad Carruth. Here's Hawkins. Got three reserves on the court right now for Georgia, so Kentucky with a chance now. See what they can do against Georgia's bench. Prince guarded by Jonas Hayes. Now Cole. Chuck Hayes comes starting in from the wing and gets a nice little finger roll up over the rim. Yeah, good job by Cliff Hawkins. Finding Hayes, cutting to the basket. Great cut by Hayes, moving his feet against this zone defense. That's what you have to do. Move your players, move the basketball, and get open shots. Jonas Hayes back to Cole. Cole will fire the three. Misses, rebound to Daniels. Up ahead it comes to Caruth. Kentucky now 10 to 4 over Georgia in the rebounding department. Stolen away by Patrick. He's got Jarvis Hayes to his left and he uses him and he lost the handle. But Patrick there to save it. Back underneath to Jarvis. Jarvis too strong off the glass. It'll be Georgia basketball. Prince did a nice job defensively, forcing Hayes to make a tough shot. Kentucky will have the basketball. Yeah, Mike Patrick did a nice job with the steal. He gave Jarvis Hayes two chances. But Hayes couldn't, couldn't handle the basketball the first time, and then Prince good D the second time around. How about Tayshaun Prince's over seven feet of arm? <laughs> and you can see it, those long arms, rangy, especially on the defensive end. He is a, a tough matchup because he moves his feet so well, and he's got those long arms. Great pass underneath, but Fitch couldn't convert. Tony Cole pushes it. Patrick fires from three. Shot it way too strong. And back comes Keith Bogans. Bogans underneath the fifth. Got the layup. Kentucky slicking offensively. They missed some relatively easy shots, but they look pretty good in the open floor tonight. Yeah, Keith Bogans getting back on his game. Nice job passing the basketball so far tonight. He's second on the club and assists. And Bogan shows you his excellent court vision there, finding Fitch. Fitch. Hayes with a tough shot. 
Well, the shooting percentages are coming down, especially for Georgia. They've really struggled these last few minutes. And Jonas Hayes responds with a 15-footer, and that breaks an 8-0 Kentucky run over a four-minute span. Tony Cole on the dribble penetration to set up Jonas Hayes open in the corner. Cole getting a lot of minutes here in the opening half. The three on the way, rebound to Jarvis Hayes. Georgia now 47%. Kentucky still at 60% from the floor. Jarvis Hayes loves to come on that wing and slash to the basket. Uh -huh. Cole with a bad pass. Here's Bogans. Nobody's home. Awful pass by Tony Cole to start the fast break for Kentucky. Keith Bogans with a big finish. 30-second timeout taken by the Georgia Bulldogs as Kentucky has opened up an eight-point lead. And that break started with the turnover. Fitz stepping in, getting the pass, and then Keith Bogans, the easy run out, slamming it home. Kentucky's done a pretty good job in transition so far tonight. When they have had opportunities, they have pushed the ball down the court well. Keith Bogans showing you that court vision, penetrating in the lane, drawing the attention of the three defenders, and Fitch able to cut to the basket. That was a two-on-three defenders break, but Bogans dribble penetration set up the easy lay-in. Well, Keith Bogans has had a disappointing season. Remember, he applied to the NBA draft, came back to school, said he wasn't ready to go, and he struggled. Last year, he shot 47% from the floor, 36% from behind the arc. He tied for second in the SEC with 17 points a game. This year, different story. 41% from the floor, 31% from behind the arc, averaging only 13 points. What's the story with Keith Bogan? Uh, I think the, the trip into the NBA draft, going in there and playing against those players, Bogan's really had a difficult time. He thought he was ready for the NBA and found out he really wasn't. And I think that, that shook his confidence considerably, and I don't think he's recovered from that. One guy who does not lack confidence in his shot is Jarvis Hayes. He elevates and hits the long-range bomb. It's a five-point Wildcat lead and ten now for Hayes. Hayes fully recovered from that knee injury earlier in the year, and he is explosive scorer because he doesn't, doesn't mind shooting. Finch is three off the back of the iron. Bogus. Yeah, awesome. Hayes fires, left it short. Rebound to Thomas. Here's Rashad right back on the floor for the Dogs. Threw it right into the hands of Prince, but batted around right back to right. Georgia now with their starters back in the ballgame. Long three from Ezra Williams. And just like that, Georgia's only down two. We can hit the century mark tonight in rough for both teams. Timeout, Kentucky. Georgia moving the basketball, but just lighting it up from three-point range. Jarvis Hayes drilling the three-point shot. And right back, Ezra Williams from way out there, well beyond the three-point line, about a 24 foot. Georgia only trailing by two. What does it take to compete in the Southeastern Conference? The same stuff it takes to outperform in the global marketplace. In the field of travel technology, WorldSpan is the class, the franchise player, the go-to guy. WorldSpan. Corporate travel comment up with airline automated internet travel technology. WorldSpan, proud partner of the SEC. Current plan not working out. Altel's got one that will. Sign up for a total freedom plan today and get into the game with nationwide calling for as little as $39.95 a month. There's no roaming or long distance charges across the U.S. Plus, you'll score a great deal on a digital phone. So rush to Altel or shop online today.
Kentucky fans come in all sizes. Little man watches his Kentucky Wildcats lead by two inside of packed Rupp Arena. Georgia, four of nine from behind the arc. Kentucky, two of seven. Overall, both teams over 50% from the floor. Bogans to Hawkins. Back to Keith. Tried to bounce it into Prince. Fitch hangs in the air. Three point opportunity for Gerald Fitch. And foul against the Bulldogs. Thomas, that'll be his and Stephen Thomas picks up his first foul of the game. Well, Kentucky very fortunate to maintain possession on this play. Keith Bogans pass it in the traffic. Hayes got a hand on it. Fitch ended up with it as a bang it in off the glass. Ten points for Fitch in the first half as he misses the three-point opportunity. Kentucky 50% in the free throw line here tonight. Hawkins steps on the baseline. It will still be Georgia ball with a fresh shot clock with 634 to go in the opening half. Kentucky back into their man-to-man -man defense for Georgia's last possession. Looked like the inline out of bounds play there back into their zone. Timeout taken by Georgia. That exact scenario, Tubby Smith at shoot around this morning had his team working on that exact scenario and they begged for Georgia to throw it to the corner so they could get their double team. And that's exactly what just happened. These coaches know what they're doing. <laughs> I'm making all this money for nothing. I just had a deja vu moment there. <laughs> well, jo Georgia had shot him out of that zone defense with Ezra Williams and Jarvis Hayes reining in three point shots. Kentucky forced to play a little man a few moments ago. The history of Kentucky basketball is long and story. The leading scorer of this rich program, Dan Itzel, from 1968 to 1970, over 2,000 career points. He averaged 26.8 points a game, which sounds like a lot. And then you think about Pistol Pete, <laughs> averaging 44 at LSU. And a guy on that team who used to be a partner of mine, Mike Pratt, now color analyst for the Wildcat Radio Network. He says he would have been among the leaders in the top five, what for is shooting all the time. <laughs> Speaking of shooting, Jarvis Hayes continues to play well here in the first half with 13 now. Hayes lighting it up. The thing about Kentucky, Issel with only 21-38 leading the program, you're always going to have two or three All-Americans on the team, so it's tough to put up really huge That's numbers. Jules Kamara was quiet. After a quick start to this game, finally puts one home after about a seven minute drought for Jules. Three point Wildcat lead. We got some points going on the board tonight. Both teams shooting the ball real well. Look at the 6 11 Kamara. The jam coast to coast for the man from Senegal. Kamara stepping out in the passing lane, taking it away. Showing you a little ball handling ability getting down the court and slamming it home. There's Thomas in a hole. To, by Gerald Fitch. Ben Hillary spotted it early. Good anticipation by Jules Kamara. Handled the basketball real well. Chris Daniels hustling back, trying to get in there and confuse him a little bit, force a turnover dribbling the ball, but Kamara having none of it, slamming it home. Jarvis Hayes will step to the free throw line. A foul discrepancy. It'll be Fitch who gets the foul. 13 for Jarvis Hayes. Make it 14. Jarvis had a season high 25 versus Pepperdine. He knocked down five threes in that game. But since Pepperdine, he was just one of 16 behind the arc. And that sprained knee has really been bothering him. It's suffered at the end of November. And, you know, Coach Eric says that it's nothing physical at this point. It's just all in his head. But I think we might be seeing his coming out party for the second time this year. Yeah, I think Jarvis Hayes has his head on straight right now. Kentucky experiencing his ability to shoot the basketball. Caruth 
Back to Fitch. Approaching five to go here in the opening half. Blocked by Williams. Right, bounce pass. Daniels foul. Count the basket. Excellent D by Georgia. Ezra Williams with the block shot and a great job handling it in transition. Rashad Wright, a beautiful pass. Chris Thomas with the finish. Here we go. Bogans on the drive. Good job dribble penetrating. That's been effective for Kentucky, but that time Ezra Williams took it away. And Rashad Wright. Great decision maker. He's not flashy, but his assist to turnover ratio is 3.1. He doesn't turn it over very much, but a nice job distributing the basketball. Good finish by Daniels. Yeah, right. Put an exclamation on that. Leads the Southeastern Conference in assist to turnover ratio. He's ninth overall in assist. But just a steady, steady player. That's all Jim Herrick needs. He has explosive scores on the wing, just needs Rashad Wright to distribute the basketball and not make mistakes. Kamara hangs and finds Prince. Great pass from George Kamara. Prince, the recipient. Incredible pass by Kamara to look around the defense while it was in midair and find Prince down low. There's Wright back to Ezra Williams. Inside, Daniels went for the jam, partially blocked by Kamara and a foul against Chuck Kays of Kentucky. Look at this pass from Jules Kamara. He sets up in the lane, but sees Prince open. Beautiful job threading the needle, getting it in there with his left hand on the pass to Prince. Both teams still shooting over 50%. As a matter of fact, Kentucky's up over 60%. We've got 424 to go in the opening half. Two shots. Georgia normally a 45% shooting team. Their opponents only shoot 41%. Kentucky, a 47% shooting team. Their opponents shoot 39%. Both these teams lighten it up offensively tonight. That's still Daniels on the floor for Kentucky. We'll also see from the Georgia Bulldogs, Mike Dean, the freshman out of Rome, Georgia, also makes his appearance and wears number two. Bulldogs in their red, the Wildcats in their white. We are on a pace to exceed 100 points in this ball game as both teams getting to the foul line. Georgia in the bonus now, Kentucky almost there. We'll be near 50 points by halftime. To Root, the sharp shooter out of Collins Park, Georgia. Mississippi State was effective with their zone defense on Saturday, but teams know that against Kentucky, good grief. <laughs> that was Tayshawn Prince like. A bomb from Ezra Williams, and then Daniels fouls Tayshawn Prince on the wing. Probably not a good foul. Bad and that'll be his third. Yes. Oh, boy. 30 feet away from the basket, Chris Daniels reaching in, but Ezra Williams shocked us all. Pulling up from nearly 30 feet out. Ezra draining the three. He is playing with incredible confidence, and Georgia only down by a point. Ezra Williams with nine. Back after this. A veil of mystery. A deadly secret. A dark power. Now, two men have been sent to uncover the truth. Universal Pictures is proud to present the stunning cinematic vision that took Europe by storm. Discover the secret of the Brotherhood. Brotherhood of the Wolf. Rated R. At select theaters this Friday. At Advanced Auto Parts, we believe in doing it yourself. So we made this commercial ourselves. We had Florence here check out the prices of our competitors versus ours. Do you have the results? But first, Florence, would you ever lie to millions of Americans who really want to believe that someone on TV is capable of telling the truth? Never. Go. Advance is still the queen of low prices. Queen, Florence? As long as I'm here. Queen's fine. Tonight at 10, it's the Southern Sports Report. Thank you, thank you, thank you! 
Show. It's the nightly newscast you've been waiting for. This is the real deal. 30 minutes every night dedicated to scores, highlights, and interviews from your hometown teams. We told you this was going to be good. Your teams, your town, your show. The Southern Sports Report, tonight at 10 on Fox Sports Net. Kentucky leads Georgia by one in what has been an entertaining first half of basketball from Rupp Arena. We've got more basketball coming your way next Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern. Vincent Yarbrough and the Tennessee Volunteers, fresh off a big win over the Ole Miss Rebels, will travel to Athens to meet Ezra Williams and these Georgia Bulldogs from Stegman Coliseum, 7 o'clock Eastern. Be sure to check the listings in your area. SEC basketball on your regional home for SEC Sports. Good game coming up Saturday. Tennessee and Georgia would think that that would be a game for third place position in the Southeastern Conference, expecting Florida and Kentucky to be the top two squads. But the way Georgia's looking, they might have other ideas. May want to hang around the top. Of course, Tennessee 1-0 in the league so far as well. Here's Eric Daniels. Gives it up to Prince. It's three right over Williams. It's perfect. Ezra Williams, a hand right in his face. May have smacked Tayshawn in the face. Ezra and Tayshawn are discussing that three-point shot right now. These two guys are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Prince got a piece up. <laughs> oh, but no look to Haston. Kentucky handling this Georgia zone incredibly well, moving the basketball around. Honey against the zone defense. Marquise Estelle, the easy slam dunk to finish that play. Thomas, the offensive rebound and the putback. Good job by Steve Thomas as Kentucky was on a roll. Georgia able to quiet this crowd a little bit with Steve Thomas's bucket. Get it to Prince. They shot another three. And a push off on Marquis Estel. Talk about your highlight reel. <laughs> yeah, Kentucky moving the basketball around. Georgia never got set defensively. Eric Daniels with the pass and you just dream about that, cutting down the lane with nobody at home. Marquis Estelle, two hands, slamming it home. At the line, number 33, Jonas Hayes. Jonas Hayes, the twin brother of Jarvis Hayes, no relation to Kentucky's Chuck Hayes, to the free throw line. Jonas happens to be five minutes younger than Jarvis Hayes. And apparently got all the hair in the family. <laughs> <laughs> Jonas Hayes, a really good foul shooter, 78%. But shot a brick that last attempt. Must be the hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ball is beautiful, Dave. <laughs> uh, three point Kentucky lead. Just when you think Kentucky's going to put a big run together, Georgia responds like that. Nice defense from the Bulldogs. Right. Inside, nowhere to go. Threw up a tough shot. Daniels up ahead. It comes to Carew. The layup is good. Yes. good. Kentucky has had four or five uncontested runouts against Georgia. Georgia's point guards that time. Rashad Wright penetrating into the lane. No defensive balance for the dogs. Kentucky able to get running and get an easy bucket. Jarvis Hayes. To his brother Jonas. The twins work perfectly. Excellent job, Jarvis to Jonas. Jonas Hayes, very nice shooter from about 15 feet in. The two brothers transferred to Georgia from Western Carolina. Set out last year. It's a foul against Rashad Wright is coming. That'll be Rashad's that first right. in the game. That'll be his first in the team's second. Dave, what a game we got going here. 49 46. We're still a minute before halftime. And Barry, we're still watching two teams shoot exceptionally well. Georgia at 
Kentucky at 63%. But Hawkins back the under the floor for the Wildcats. Gerald Fitch will take a seat. It's just incredible play after incredible play, and that has to favor Kentucky. The deeper ball club, Georgia, they only play about seven or eight guys. They're going to have a tough time keeping up this pace as we get into the 90s and possibly over the century mark toward the end of this ball game. Jarvis Hayden, guarded by Prince. Tried to get it down low, but the help defense was almost there perfectly. That's Caruth. Might have jammed a finger trying to reach in for that basketball. Ezra Williams out of the game taking a break. Chris Daniels in foul trouble. Jarvis Hayes really the only scoring threat on the court for the Georgia Bulldogs. Under a minute to play the opening half. Dean swings it to right. Stolen away by Caruth. The finger roll just over the top of the rim. Kamar and Prince set the trap in the corner. Pitched it out to that set up Rashad Caruth stepping in the passing lane as he didn't look like he was hurting too bad as he was driving in there to lay it in. Mike Dean out of Rome, Georgia. Joined the team on December 15th. Shot clock working down. Right, tough shot off the glass. Shot after shot has gone down for both of these clubs. Four seconds. Here's Prince. The fall away three. No good. Wave off the foul. Good D by Steve Thomas, forcing a tough attempt from Tayshaun. About the only tough shot that didn't go down was the last one. 53 to 48 in 20 minutes of basketball. Tayshaun Prince. Working Steve Thomas thought he could get by him, thought he could get open for a shot, but Thomas did a nice job moving his feet, staying aggressive. And you see the red light on above the rim that slam dunk definitely after the horn for halftime. My goodness, what a half of basketball. We'll have our halftime activities after this timeout. I've always loved working on computers, and in the Army, that's what I do. I set up networks, I troubleshoot, I basically do things I would have never dreamed I'd been able to do before. If you never thought about the U.S. Army or Army Reserve, think about this. There are 212 ways for you to become a soldier and work at a job you'll love. Call for this free video to find out which job is right for you. I'd never really thought of the Army as a choice. Your free video will also give you an idea of what Army life is like, how you can earn money for college, even what questions to ask your recruiter. I'm going to walk away with a lot of memories, a lot of friends, and something that's going to change me for the rest of my life. Call 1-800-645-ARMY right now, and you'll also receive a free Army t-shirt. Discover the 212 ways you can be an Army of One. If you would ask me a year ago if I'd be here doing this, uh, I could have never imagined it. I love what I do. I love doing it for the Army. I'm going fishing with Ralph Barbie. I'm going fishing with Ralph Barbie. When the sun comes up, we'll be on that lake, setting our hooks with that topwater bait. Fishing with Ralph Barbie, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays, only on Comcast Channel 4. Brought to you by Mark Yacht Tire and Auto Works, Lamar Advertising, Advanced Services, and Eden Hopkins Roofing. Man, that man could catch some fish. If you're like me, you love relaxing with a movie on TV. That's why Channel Guide Magazine is so great. It's the only place I can find every movie that's playing on cable for the whole month. Every movie from A to Z. Channel Guide also gives me information I can't find anywhere else. Celebrity interviews, Hollywood gossip, and behind-the-scenes scoop. Call today and order Channel Guide magazine and receive your first issue absolutely free. If you love movies, you'll love Channel Guide magazine. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Back. 
back inside Rupp Arena, 53-48. That is right, a lot of points put up in the first half between the Georgia Bulldogs and the eighth-ranked Kentucky Wildcats. Dave Neal alongside Barry Booker as we come to you from halftime. And I tell you, Barry, that was one of the better first halves of basketball I have seen in a number of years. Both teams over 50% from the floor. Great athletic plays that resulted in baskets. Yeah, it was incredible, and it's just good offense. You know these teams are aggressive defensive clubs with Tubby Smith and Jim Herrick, the coaches. But just incredible offense, nice job moving the basketball, passing, and just shot making. All these players on the court playing with a lot of confidence, shooting the basketball great. Well, the two players we talked about in the open have been big factors in this one. Ezra Williams from Georgia had a nice spurt midway through the first half to help Georgia in a long three. <laughs> An incredible shot as he's uh, taking the challenge of having Tayshawn Prince guarding Ezra Williams and Tayshawn getting a little mano a mano thing but nine points for Ezra in the first half. Did a nice job shooting the basketball for the dogs. Yeah, matter of fact, Prince and Ezra Williams were having a little chat fest, you might say. <laughs> but Prince, the All-American, steps up big. Uh, good D right there by Ezra Williams. But Tayshawn says, all right, you're going to shoot a 30-footer in my face. I know about that, dropping in the three-pointer. 11 points for Tayshawn. Both these big guns really playing well for their respective clubs. Tayshawn, five of eight from the field. An entertaining first half, and this is certainly one of those uh, halves that we'll remember for a long time. Can Georgia continue to hang with Kentucky? Well, they're going to have a tough time. Chris Daniels with the three fouls already in the first half. Georgia has a tough time with their bench. They're not very deep, so it's going to be tough for them if this pace continues and they have to score 107 points to win. <laughs> they're going to have a tough time. Yeah, I would say the odds are against them at that <laughs> yeah. point. Well, when we come back, we will chat with Tubby Smith. We caught up with him earlier today to talk about this Kentucky basketball team in the state of the Wildcat Nation. Vault into the 2002 National Collegiate Women's Gymnastics Championships hosted by the University of Alabama. The high-flying action takes place April 18th through 20th at Coleman Coliseum in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. To get your tickets, call 205-348-2262. That's 205-348-2262. Or log on to NCAAChampionships.com. Do you know who I am? How about me? Or me? I'm a gymnast. I'm a point guard and an honor student. I'm going to be a pediatrician. Research proves that girls who participate in sports are more likely to be successful in life. The Women's Sports Foundation provides programs, grants, and scholarships so all women can excel, no matter what the field. So if you don't know who I am, you will. Get to know the Women's Sports Foundation. The exotic aroma of rubber and fuel. A brilliant rainbow of cars blurring into the turns. The precision of choreographed pit crews. Have you ever wondered how they got there? Let Universal Technical Institute turn your passion for NASCAR into a rewarding career in automotive technology. Call now, 1-800-884-4262 to get on the fast track and begin your automotive training at UTI. NASCAR chose UTI, shouldn't you? Gearing up for SEC basketball won't be complete without first visiting one of your local Hibbett sports stores. Here you'll find the brand new SEC collection and a money savings offer from Golden Flake. Whenever you purchase a 12 and a quarter ounce bag of Golden Flake thin and crispy chips, you'll receive a coupon worth 20% off any SEC collection item. And when you buy collection merchandise, you'll get a coupon for buy one, get one free off Golden Flake's Mazitos brand tortilla chips. It's a win-win when you're wearing the SEC collection. Back inside Rupp Arena, Kentucky leads Georgia 53 to 48. Our halftime activities continue in what was an exciting first half of basketball. Well, this Kentucky Wildcat team opened up with a very disappointing loss to Western Kentucky in this building. Then they went and tore up some competition before they met Duke, and they took the Wildcats, who were then ranked number one in the country, to task. They ended up losing that game, but what a thrilling contest it was. They came back and responded well, and then they ended up losing Mississippi State last Saturday in SEC competition. We had a chance earlier today to catch up with Tubby Smith to talk about this Kentucky basketball team. Here's that conversation. Let's talk about this basketball team, your Kentucky team. I know a difficult loss last week against Mississippi State, but uh, overall, your thoughts on this basketball team, and, and do they have the kind of makeup you expected as you enter league play? Do you feel good and confident about this club? 
Yes, I do. We, we took a step backwards in the Mississippi State game, but you know, not being able to finish games, and that's twice we've done that with the lead against Duke and now against Mississippi State. But again, we, we're very young in that our point guard, Cliff Hawkins, is still learning. It's his first time he's had the opportunity to start. Last year he didn't start as a freshman, but he's really coming on, and we're looking for that type of leadership. So I think this team is, we're about ready to, you know, to, you don't want to be peaking right now, but you don't want to be blowing leads the way we did either. So I think with Tayshawn and getting Keith to come back around, he's been struggling with his, with his shooting, but, but once we get him on track, we're going to be okay. What about Tayshawn and uh, coming back and, and improving his game, getting better? What areas has he gotten better in from the Tayshawn of a year ago? Well, uh, he's gotten stronger. Uh, you can see some, you actually can see some definition in his arms and legs. And that was something that, you know, 188-pound uh, freshman when he came here. And, and he does whatever we ask him to do. And he's having to have to carry a lot more of the scoring load this year. Uh, and his mentality has always been, when I'm ready, as far as NBA is concerned, it'll be there. And so he's, he's had the, men, the right mental approach. And I think he's been much more relaxed and, and playing that way as well. And finally, this team, to, to make a run at the Final Four, what area do you see this team that uh, continue doing or improve on to get to that level? Well, we lost some, we lost some interior defense with Jason Parker and knee surgery out for the year. And then Marvin Stone, uh, his dismissal from the team. You know, it's a 6'10 guy, 250 pounds that we lose here. So now we have Marquise Estel, uh, who still has, you know, gingerly on his knees, has knee problems. Um, Jules is thin, and so and and now you boil down to Tayshawn Prince. So we one of the strengths that we had, you know, after last year's season and hopefully coming into this season was our interior defense. And now we've we've gotten a little thin in that area. So if we can get that back, shore that up, gain get the right type of experience for our uh, young players, then I think we can be one of the. We won a tough team uh, by the end of the year. Should be a fun run anyway. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thank Good you. luck the rest of the way. W. Smith here at halftime. We'll come back, and uh, Barry Booker will rejoin me. We'll take a look at some of those first half highlights and statistics. Stay with us, folks. The bow. Resistance becomes strength. Becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gem in one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. This week, Comcast delivers the hits you want on in demand. Tomb Raider. Ooh. The Grinch. Legally Blonde. Cats and Dogs. All this week on In Demand Pay-Per-View, delivered home by Comcast. As the new year begins, it usually brings the coldest weather of the season, whether we like it or not. At Southern Signing and Window, we can help. Take advantage of our year-end clearance sale and save three ways. One, buy three Ultimate 2000 windows and get the fourth for only a dollar. Two, get fantastic financing with low monthly payments. And three, no payment until May. If you've waited all season for energy-efficient windows, it's not too late. But you've got to call Southern Signing and Window Company now at 1-800-785-5530 for a free estimate. Call now. your left of your screen is a former roommate of Barry Booker at Vanderbilt. <laughs> He's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> We're back at halftime. The Big Blue Nation on hand in Rupp Arena, 23,000. Along with Barry and I witnessed what was an exceptional first half of basketball. And Barry, when you see a score of 53-48, the question begs. 
was there a lack of defense? I think at times Georgia didn't play very good defense, especially in transition. And Kentucky worked well against Georgia's own defense to get some easy shots. But for the most part, it's just incredible shot making going on tonight. Let's take a look at some of those shots that went down in the first half. Now Georgia got rolling. Jarvis Hayes sliding into the basket over Jules Gamara. Tough shot. Hayes banking it in. Georgia playing good defense. Ezra Williams on the block shot. Rashad Wright, the good feed to Chris Daniels for the three-point play attempt. But for Kentucky, Tayshawn Prince, 11 points in the first half, did it driving to the basket, and he also did it from three-point range. Good feed inside to Tayshawn Prince coming up here from Jules Kamara. Prince knocking out that shot. And Kentucky working at that zone defense, cutting to the basket. Marquise Estelle with a slam dunk right there. Barry, the numbers indicate the 53 to 48 score. The only weak spot for the Wildcats was the three point shooting where they only shot 36% from behind the arc. Most teams will take that for a season average. The bench points so this is what you expected. You thought Kentucky's bench was a little too strong for Georgia. Yeah, Rashad Carruth coming up with 13 points and then nine more points from the rest of that bench. Jonas Hayes accounting for all the bench scoring for Georgia with nine points. We can only hope the second half will be just as good as the first 20 minutes. We'll find out in a matter of moments. Back after this timeout. There's a place where the flatbread is always soft, the lettuce always crisp, and the chicken always grilled to perfection. That place is inside a new Chick-fil-A Cool Wrap. Grilled to... Try all three new Cool Wraps, Chicken Garden, Chicken Caesar, and Spicy Chicken. New Cool Wraps from Chick-fil-A. There's a time when this thing was sweet. I'm not sure when exactly. But now this relic is, um, shall we say, past its prime, sort of like your old computer. Right now, you can upgrade to America's favorite PC, a complete Dell system with an Intel Pentium 4 processor for just $8.99. Dig it. Oh, you're the more mobile type. Not a couch potato. You can get a Dell notebook with the Intel Pentium 3 processor for $1149. Check this out. Right now, you can get up to $100 back. Getting a Dell is so easy. All you gotta do is call or go online, and the Dell folks will help you build the computer that's right for you. Yup. Dell desktop for $8.99 or notebook for $11.49. Well, don't just sit there. At these prices, you can get a Dell with what you find right here. Dude, you're getting a Dell. Easy to buy, easy to own, easy as Dell. Welcome to the best damn sports store, period. Clean up on aisle six. So get that out of here. You ready, Jimmy? No. Why pay child support with the Pro Athlete Fraternity Test? Oh, DeMarco Farr. John Sally. John Sally. Comedy commentary highlights the best damn sports show, period. Back inside Rupp Arena, moments away from second half basketball. 53-48 is our score, and we are underway. Georgia will have the basketball first in their red uniforms. The Wildcats wearing their home whites. Jarvis Hayes, first shot out of the locker room is a 10-footer from the baseline. Right where he left off in the first half, 15 points in the first half. Hayes drilling a little 10-footer along the baseline to get things started in the second. Eric bats it away from Bogans. 22 on the shot clock for the Wildcats. Opens up a straight man to man against the Wildcats. Prince on the baseline with Thomas. Hawkins, the left hander, no good. Thomas, the rebound. Georgia opened up the game with Daniels on Prince, but Daniels has three fouls, so they move Thomas, the other big man, to Prince now. That may have just been in a switch situation because Tayshawn Prince can step away from the basket and really expose uh, Steve Thomas's quickness with. Prince's ball handling ability. That foul against yeah, Jules Kamara. That'll be his second. Second in the team's first. The only person in real foul trouble was Chris Daniels, who had three 
in that first half. Nobody else with more than two on the floor. Hayes, he'll swing it around to Williams. He quickly fires and has the three for tied at 53. Five straight for the Dogs out of the locker room. And Kentucky has not allowed a team to shoot better than 50% against them since last season, and that was their last game of the year against USC. Bogans takes it to the glass. For Keith Bogans, just his fourth point of the game. Bogans' struggles continue, although he is doing a nice job passing the basketball. You see Kentucky back in the man-to-man. -man. Every time they go zone, there's a Williams drops in a three of them. Fitch with a steal ahead to Prince. Kamara on the low block, right near the stripped it. Thomas the rebound. Finally a shot that doesn't go down. But a good one inside by Jules Kamara. Good job getting position down low. Just couldn't get it to stay in. Here's Jarvis Hayes. Might have got away with a big hop step. Thomas hangs in the air. The follow-up from Daniels. Barry, you talked about in the opening half, Georgia, the best offensive rebounding team in the league. And going to the glass strong, Steve Thomas did a great job using his body and his strength to come up with the basketball, and then Daniels on the bench. Fitch missed the layup. Maybe a lid on that basket down there. Kentucky has had two straight, just not stay down. Georgia went for the lead, couldn't get it. Good job by Wright driving in there. He just couldn't get the short jumper down. Steve Thomas, great hands, anticipation, saw Cliff Hawkins trying to feed it to Tayshaun Prince and Daniels right there. Daniels leading this club in steals at 2.3 a game. Phenomenal. Tied at 55, loose basketball. Jump ball, and Kentucky has the arrow in their favor. Kentucky has gone to the 2-3 zone on their inline out-of-bounds possessions, and Ezra Williams has made them pay, dropping in a tough, contested three-point shot, and then Georgia working the glass. Steve Thomas, the first attempt, and then Chris Daniels right there to clean it up. Bogans slices his way through the lane. Kentucky's lead back to two. Georgia has never led in this basketball game. The biggest lead for Kentucky was eight. Hayes misses the three. Fitch. Daniels the rebound over Prince. I tell you, the first five for Georgia, their starters are very good basketball players. They're hanging right with Kentucky and really outplaying the Wildcats when this group of players is on the court for Georgia. The problem for Georgia is they have to go to that bench. Daniels off the glass. Daniels now with 11. Chris Daniels showing his athleticism. He got to sit quite a bit, or had to sit quite a bit in the first half after picking up the three fouls. Bogans in and out, shakes his head in disbelief. Had a good look at it. Yet another shot that's going in and out for Kentucky. They have had several opportunities, just not getting them to go down. Thomas tried to go back door. Kentucky answers, but Williams with a great block at the other end. To the corner it goes. Here's Prince. Hawkins, come on, the jam. Cliff Hawkins, incredible handling the basketball, penetrating against any type of defense. Hawkins gets in the lane, causes you so many problems defensively. A good feed to Jules Kamara for the easy dunk. Ten for Kamara. Hayes now has 19 in the game. And we are definitely on our way to the century mark here in this basketball game. Both teams seem to be a little bit tired right now. We've gone over five minutes now without a break. Both clubs breathing a little bit hard. 14-42 to play in the basketball game. Kamara underneath. Daniels, all he can do is watch. And it's playground basketball out here right now. Both these clubs kind of tired. You're getting good shots on both ends. And there's an example of being tired. 
61-59. The Wildcats lead Georgia. Keith Bogans trying to get the Wildcats started. But Chris Daniels doing his part for the Dogs. Remember, Georgia hasn't won here since 1985. Well, it sure is nice in paradise. A little lonely, but, well, who do we have here? Arr, you're a real bird of paradise. Yeah, 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 real original. So, who are you anyway? What do you mean, who am I? I'm Ooh. Adam. May I tempt you with a Red Bull? Tempt me with a bull? Hello, it's a job for a snake. But, my dear, Red Bull's an energy drink. It gives you wings. Oh, tempting, very tempting. But why do you want to fly out of paradise? Because that's where my van is parked. <laughs> At Advance, we believe in doing it yourself. So we made this commercial ourselves. Hey, Charles. What are you doing? Just getting ready to install a new battery out there for a customer. I see. <laughs> Pretty cool outfit. Wow. Well, where'd you get those awesome goggles, battery guy? Funny. <laughs> battery guy walks the earth in search of a battery. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, battery guy. Bow before him. Of all the online shopping websites, one stands out as the destination for SEC fans. SECstore.com. Inside, you can visit over 20 different product departments, offering over 100 items per school. And there's no better place to get official, cool SEC logo merchandise. And when the clock winds down at championship time, official victory caps and tees go on sale instantly. It's the ultimate shopping experience for all SEC fans. SECstore.com. The legendary Adolph Ruff, head coach of the Kentucky program for 42 years. 876 victories and four NCAA titles. Just one of many great coaches that have been at the helm of the Kentucky program. There is another one, Joe B. Hall. 74% winning percentage for Joe B. Hall, who attends nearly every Kentucky home game. Incredible basketball tradition here in Kentucky. And a little football tradition, too. Timmy Couch. If I'm not mistaken, he just got real wealthy with the Cleveland Browns. As he is, uh, I believe, going to be the quarterback of the future for the Browns for a long, long time. He had a great season as Cleveland actually put together some wins this year. Yeah, the Browns building. Three, three, three. And to see if Kentucky Wildcats, the basketball side, get it well. Prince misses a little jump hook. Georgia the rebound. Down by two. The longer this goes and the closer it stays, the more confidence Georgia will have down the stretch. And not lacking for confidence at all. Really playing well. Williams bounce pass inside to Jonas Hayes. Hayes. Tied up again. Jim Herrick getting a little help off of his bench in the person of Jonas Hayes. 11 points so far in the ball game. Foul against the Bulldogs. That'll go against Jonas Hayes. That's his first. Tayshawn Prince working against Steve Thomas. You'd think he'd step outside to the three-point line and try to use his quickness against Thomas. But Prince showing you he can do it inside against bigger players. Good job getting in position and drawing that foul. Kamara misses the little hook shot. That's two in a row for the Wildcats in the paint. Kentucky 55% shooting, Georgia 54. Blocked from behind by Kamara. Up ahead to Fitch. The alley-oop to Kamara! <laughs> Kentucky has had several fast break opportunities. Georgia getting a little bit tired with the pace of this game. Kentucky needs to continue to press it. Get up and down the court, force Georgia to run. Kamara scored six straight for the Wildcats. The three off the front of the iron. Last touch by George, it'll be Kentucky basketball. And Jim Herrick could only watch as this was one of the all-time great ones. Fitch, the pass across. Looked like the Georgia defender got a hand on it, or it might have been too high, but Kamara, he could really rise and get up. Rashawn Wright just tipped it, slowed it down a little bit. But Jules Kamara, incredible finish. 
Kentucky in that running game, they, that can be the difference here as we come down the stretch. Even with all that excitement, only a two-point lead for the Wildcats, and then a foul against Georgia. Jarvis Hayes will pick that up underneath. That's his third. And take Sean Prince, takes a seat for a moment as Chuck Hayes comes in. Foul trouble starting to mount. Fatigue becoming a factor for the Georgia Bulldogs. Kentucky with a chance right now to extend the lead and build the lead. Georgia in that zone. Remember the zone Mississippi State played last week and really gave Kentucky problems. Pestle couldn't get it to go down, but tipped right back to Caruth in her fresh 35 on the shot clock for Kentucky. Caruth, three off the mark. Fitch, the offensive rebound, taken away by Rashad Wright. Off the hands of Mike Dean, it'll still be Georgia basketball. Last touch by Caruth. So says Ted Hillary on the baseline. Tony Cole on the floor for Rashad Wright. For the Cats, Blue Falcons return. Georgia finally able to come up with possession. Kentucky did a great job battling on the boards on that last offensive possession against Georgia's zone defense. I think the next couple of minutes will be huge for the Bulldogs. Hey, he's going to fall away three over Eric Daniels, and Georgia has their first lead of the game at 64 to 63. Jarvis Hayes continuing to light it up. Georgia hanging right in there against the Cats at home. That's still trying to go underneath and find Hawkins with it, but threw it away. Tony Cole. Here's Jarvis Hayes. He's got 24 in the game. Good D by Steve Thomas, saving that basketball. Georgia getting in transition, and Jarvis Hayes unconscious right now. Quickness by Hawkins, frees himself up. That's the thought about the three. Marquise was working on that three and shoot around today. He's 40% from three point range, two out of five, so you gotta respect that. And Marquise jams it home. I think the closer in, the better for Marquise <laughs> at six foot ten. Absolutely a better shot than the three pointer. But you're seeing Kentucky get more and more easy baskets as they make Georgia play defense. Fatigue kicking in for the Dolphins. Tony Cole misses the high arching shot. Here come the Wildcats. Down one. Hayes had to give it up. Caruth hangs in the air. Marquise Estel over the back. Foul against the Wildcats will go back the other way. Georgia thrilled to see this media time out right now. Jim Harris Club leading it by one in Lexington. Tire is proud to be the official tire of the Southeastern Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. This week, Comcast delivers the hits you want on in demand. Tomb Raider. Ooh. The Grinch. Legally Blonde. Cats and dogs. All this week on In Demand Pay-Per-View, delivered home by Comcast. If you've waited all season to install maintenance-free energy-saving Ultimate 2000 siding on your home, it's not too late. Call 1-800-785-5530 to take advantage of Southern Siding and Windows inventory clearance sale and save three ways. One, save up to 50% on Ultimate 2000 siding with contoured foam insulation. Two, get great financing with low monthly payments. And three, no payment until May. Call Southern Siding and Window now at 1-800-785-5530 for a free estimate and to save three ways during our inventory clearance sale. Georgia up by one. Dave Neal alongside Barry Booker. 
10.28 to go in the second half. And when you think about dynasties, you think of UCLA and their 11 titles, but also Kentucky. Remember, they have won seven national titles, including, get this, 42 SEC championships, the all-time winningest college basketball program. But Georgia, who hasn't won in this building since 1985, their only victory, up by one. Jarvis Hayes draining the three-point shot with a bunch of subs on the court for Georgia. Hayes carrying them to the lead. Dropping in that little 18-footer. Jarvis Hayes really feeling it offensively, and he needs to get the basketball, although he's taking a little rest right now. Both teams shooting 53% in this game. Jarvis Hayes has been exceptional. 24 points for Jarvis. He's four of seven from behind the arc. Has a couple of rebounds. Stephen Thomas has 10 rebounds. Chris Daniels 11 points. Prince with 11. Kamara with 14. Taken away by Hawkins to Caruth. Off the glass, it's up and good. Kentucky back in front by one. I'm really surprised that Tony Cole is still on the court right now for Georgia. Had that turnover at half court with Cliff Hawkins tracking him. Three. Jonas Hayes off the glass. Georgia continues to pound the offensive glass. And the Hayes brothers doing work for the dogs in the scoring department tonight. Caruth. Now it goes to Daniels. The left-hander kicks it back out to Chuck Hayes. Oh. Loose basketball. Bounce pass underneath to Chuck Hayes. Daniels with the assist. And Kentucky continuing to get easy baskets on their end of the court. As long as they're a little bit patient and they go to the glass, they're going to get some easy shots because Georgia is running out of gas right now. Tony Cole lost the handle. Gerald Finch in the game for Hawkins, right in the game for Cole. For Georgia coming in the lineup. Yeah. Shot right. Can play a lot of minutes. He played over 35 minutes and 75% of the games he started last year for Georgia, so he can play. We get a look at Gerald Fitz on that bench. Or excuse me, Cliff Hawkins on that Kentucky bench. A lot of players winded. Georgia you got a few of their reserves in the game right now. Dean and Jonas Hayes on the court trying to buy a few minutes. Williams with a three-pointer. Georgia now leads it by a pair. Zone defense on the inline out of bounds play for Kentucky. Three-point basket for Ezra Williams. We've seen it over and over again tonight. Eric Daniels, a lanky left-hander off the glass. Tied at 71. We've also seen a lot of easy baskets lately for Kentucky. Working the basketball inside. Eric Daniels able to get the deuce on that trip. Steve Daniels, excuse me, Chris Daniels up to Ezra Williams. Williams hangs. Great looking <laughs> shot over Chuck Hayes. Ezra Williams making tough shots. Hotly contested jumpers, but Ezra Williams still dropping them in. And a blocking foul. Count the basket. Jim Herrick erupts on the Georgia bench. He can't believe it. He thought it was a traveling violation. He has to be corralled by his assistant coaches. It looked, it looked like it was on the floor. And Tayshawn Prince, nice little up fake moving to the basket. Rashad Wright trying to step in and take the charge. But Prince, as he was completing the collision with Wright, able to drop it in there, and that's borderline. Could count it, maybe not. Kentucky gets the bucket. And Prince now looking to give the Cats a lead. Jim Herrick's club has been in this building twice. That is the Georgia Bull Bulldogs. They lost by six two years ago and actually led the game by nine in the second half before falling. Last year, 67-63, they lose by four and really made a run at Kentucky. Well, things can change so quickly against the Wildcats. I was on a Vanderbilt team that came in here with a four-point lead coming down the stretch. But Kentucky erupted, a couple of turnovers. Kentucky can turn things around in a hurry playing here in their own building. Now the Kentucky fans and Tubby Smith up in arms as 
Fitch stepped on the baseline. It'll be Georgia basketball. 7.56 to go in the game. Do not go anywhere. We're tied at 73. When the Edmonds upgraded to Bell South Fast Access DSL, they knew life would change. Yeah, in my mind. The lightning speed lets them take everything they do to the next level. Bye, honey. Good luck at the science fair. So Mom is finally creating a digital photo album. I can't believe you let me go like that. My hair looks ridiculous. Hold on a second. How's it going, huh? While Dad transforms the house, room by room. Now they all have a high-speed internet connection that helps them do better. Can I get in here real quick? Hold on a second. No, no, talk, talk, talk. It doesn't tie up their phone line, and it costs just 45 bucks a month. That's what I thought. Genius. They even got a free month for ordering. How smart am I for getting DSL? Oh, yeah. Mike is also doing a little better in school. Can I help you, please? Visit fastaccess.com and order Bell South Fast Access DSL for your family. Connect and create something. Bell South. schedule. Georgia hits the road in SEC competition for the first time and what it amounts to is a 73-73 score. Dave Neal alongside Barry Booker. Glad you could join us. We had a great win in Tuscaloosa last weekend as Alabama rallied with 1.3 seconds left. They get fouled on a three-point attempt and Terrence Mead knocks down two or three. They win that game and here we go. It looks like this will go down to the finish again. SEC basketball, there's nothing like it. The competition and they're great matchups. Every time out, you would think Kentucky, the number eight team in the country, would just blow Georgia away. But Georgia coming in here really playing well tonight. Williams travels with the basketball. That's the 13th turnover for the Bulldogs tonight. Very well played game. A lot of points on the board. 73 all. 53 48 at the half. Great pass. Gamara lost the handle as he went for the dunk. Fitch threaded it in there. And then there's a rim. Somehow touched the basketball that went out of bounds on him. Kamara was going to jam it and it just dropped right out of his bread basket. Look at Fitch threading that basketball in there. And Kamara trying to go up strong. Lost it on the way up. 23 seconds on the shot clock for Kentucky. Here's Fitch. Bogans. Bogans in the game with six points. Foul against the Bulldogs. That'll go against Steve Thomas. Just his second. Only the fourth team foul against the Bulldogs. Only two team fouls against Kentucky. We may not uh, get to the bonus for several more minutes now. But the pace of this game has slowed considerably in the second half. Kamara <laughs> off the rim twice, and it kisses the glass and through the net. And a toe on the three-point line, so that gives Kentucky a two-point edge. Prince with a steal. Two on one. Jarvis Hayes did a nice job on kicking it to slow down the fast break because that was more than likely going to result in a thunderous slam. <laughs> yeah, Keith Bogans filling the left lane. A two-on-one break opportunity. Good job by Hayes to break it up. Let Georgia set their defense, which has been poor lately. Kentucky getting good opportunities down low. Bogans, double team, left it short, followed by Daniels. He got the big south ball up in the air. Eric Daniels and Kentucky working the boards and working the inside of Georgia's defense as the dogs appear to be dog tired. Hayes answers. He's got 26 in the game. Jarvis Hayes has stepped to the forefront on numerous occasions this evening. Georgia just needs to continue to feed Jarvis Hayes. 
But really the big thing for them is play some defense. Shut Kentucky down and then rebound the basketball as George has had a tough time these last few trips down the court for the Cats. Ezra Williams picks up his first foul of the game. Two-point Kentucky lead. Bogans tries to go inside, lost the handle. Jump ball, Georgia has the arrow pointing in their direction. Good hustle by Rashad Wright. Looked like Keith Bogans had secured the basketball, was about to make a feed from his backside. Bogans in the lane, Wright started the scramble. He knocked it away from Bogans, and then able to tie him up on the floor. Good job by Rashad Wright. Discussion with the scores table. I'm wondering about the possession arrow right now. Well, it should be Georgia's basketball because Georgia opened up the half with the basketball. Then there was a tie up on this end, and Kentucky got it. So you need to be over there talking to the officials, I believe, Dave. Eh? Setting them straight. I don't think they need money. <laughs> For the Cats, checking in line up with shot for takes a seat for back on the floor. What is the story with Keith Bogans? I mean, what can you see in his game? Is it just a lack of confidence right now? Well, I think the confidence is part of it, but he's not shooting the basketball well from three-point range. And his entire game is built around that jump shot. When he struggles with his jumper, his entire game really kind of deteriorates. Six points for Bogans as he sits on that bench. Good pressure from Kentucky. Georgia has only 15 seconds on the shot clock, but Jarvis Hayes gets tied up by Prince. That's an aspect of Prince's game I think is overlooked, and that's his defensive ability. Yeah, especially out on the perimeter. He moves his feet very well. Right. Hit the backboard and nothing else. He caught him around. Hayes misses the three up ahead to Tayshawn. Lost the handle, but a foul against the Bulldogs. That'll go against Rashad Wright. Jarvis Hayes finally missed a jump shot. Three-point shot, and Kentucky was able to get in transition. There's Tayshaun Prince tracking Jarvis Hayes as Hayes has really played well. 26 points so far on the evening. Tayshaun Prince didn't allow a shot attempt on that, on that trip down the court. Deshaun Prince trying to be a repeat player of the year in the Southeastern Conference, trying to pick up a Wooden Award, Naismith Award, uh, every kind of national award he can pick up. And he's headed in that direction. You know, I think as long as Kentucky continues to win, his chances increase dramatically. Absolutely, that is the key. Right, stumbles, tie up, Kentucky gets it. With 5.22 to play in the basketball game, it's a four point. Wildcat lead. The aggressive Kentucky defense. Cliff Hawkins with his quickness, forcing another turnover. As Rashad Wright, his feet just went out from under him. He goes on the floor, gives Kentucky possession. See, those things just happen inside the room. <laughs> they don't happen at other arenas. Ah, uh, the magic. And this is a new court, too. Prince, the three, off the iron. Williams, the rebound. This place would have erupted had that three gone down. Ezra Williams. Ezra was 17 in the game. The long three. Got it, Ezra Williams. How can six three of the game? And how can he guard him any better? Rashad Carruth had him pushed out to 28 feet away. He's still making jumper. Williams goes to the basket. Blocked by Kamara. Back into the hands of Chris Daniels. Jarvis Hayes, Hayes, he has it. Georgia now leads by one. What a basketball game. Incredible offense. Apparently the only way to stop Ezra Williams is to not allow him to shoot the three-point shot. But Jarvis Hayes still scoring effectively, slicing into the lane at 6'7". He's able to get up over the defenders and drop in that jumper. Tayshaun Prince swings it to Carew. 
can Georgia play enough defense in these last four minutes and change to come up with a victory in this ballgame? Very both teams still shooting 54%. Hawkins, the left-hander, no good, and a foul on Kamara as he goes over the back of Chris Daniels. The third on Kamara. Three fifty-eight, meaning we have a timeout on the floor. Georgia, only two wins in Lexington in the school's history. A deep fly to left, and that one's out of here. It's your mom. She thinks you stink too. No. Rated E. Sure, the holidays are over, but it's not too late to open one of these. The Compact Rosario 1700T Notebook. It's got hot swappable drives and the incredibly fast mobile Intel Pentium 3 Processor M for just $1349. Plus, we'll give you a carrying case and an extra battery free. So give yourself one last holiday present to open before this deal closes. Call 1-888-271-1826 to get yours now. Would you notice if your kids were sending out signals that they were in trouble and needed help? Stop, look, pay attention. It's your kid, stay involved. You should know what they're up to. You may not always like what you see, but you may be the only one with the power to change it. You're a parent, be a responsible one. Tonight on your Southern Sports Report, Southern rivals collide when the Hornets and the Hawks get it on at the Hive. We'll deliver the wrap up right from the locker room. And we've got the scoop you got to hear about on the Hornets' future. Plus, ACC hoops heating up as the struggling heels look to snap the Terps' home winning streak. Your teams, your town, your show. The Southern Sports Report tonight at 10. Georgia with 80. Kentucky with 79. We've got just under four minutes remaining from Lexington. Dave Neal and Barry Booker. SEC basketball. It is here, and it is good. It's awesome. <laughs> Two leading scorers, Jules Kamara. Jules Kamara with a big night tonight. He leads Kentucky with 16 points. He's 7 of 9 from the field, and Jarvis Hayes having a huge game with 28 points. His season high was 25 versus Pepperdine. And since that Pepperdine game behind the arc, Hayes only one of 16. Tonight behind the arc, he is four of eight. See his averages on the season, just a shade under 16. But Kamara also with a huge night for the Wildcats. I think Jules beginning to play like many people thought he would after sitting out last season. Look at Chris Daniels for Georgia handling the Kentucky pressure. Georgia takes a page out of Kentucky's playbook. Allows Chris, uh, Chris Daniels as Tayshawn Prince sometimes for Kentucky brings it up against pressure defense. Bogans back on the floor for the Wildcats. And a hand check on Gerald Fitch. That'll be the fourth. Or the second foul on Fitch, who wears number four. Scores from around the Southeastern Conference tonight. Alabama and Vandy in the first half. Auburn all over Ole Miss. Ole Miss had a good preseason. Lost their opener. Tennessee now struggling against Auburn. That game in Oxford. We are under three and a half minutes to play. And David may be last team with the basketball wins. Williams misses the three, kept alive. But only briefly, it's Kentucky basketball. I think Georgia has weathered that storm of the, the stretch during this game where they were really tired, having a tough time playing defense. They have gotten this thing into the last few minutes. They'll be able to use a couple of timeouts to give a little rest. They really have a shot in this ball game to pull out a victory in Rupp Arena. The shot right double teaming off Cliff Hawkins. Hawkins doesn't want to take the three point shot, so Wright can go down in there and dig it out against the Kentucky big guy. Fitch, the three. Got it! Gerald Fitch with 13 in the game. But those three, the biggest of the evening. Kentucky up by two. Georgia has answered all night long. They're having trouble getting into their offense with Chris Daniels bringing it up the court. Georgia hasn't been able to get into their offense quickly. And a hand 
check called against Bogans. It's so loud in here, you can't even hear the whistle blow. They just have to look for the players' reactions as the, the crowd is trying to spur Kentucky on the victory. A big jumper by Fitz, the dribble penetration by Keith Bogans. Sets up Fitz for the open jumper. Also a nice screen set over there by George Kamara. Good job by Fitz knocking out the jumper. It is noisy and rough. Williams lost the handle. Kentucky has the basketball up by two. And Kentucky cranking it up defensively, not allowing Georgia to get shots off. Sean Prince in the basketball game with 15 points. He had 11 at the break. Here's Bogus underneath. He lost the handle. Up ahead it comes to Daniels. And Kamara with the block, but the foul. Good D by Jules Kamara. <laughs> Anticipation by the official Ted Hillary. Great job by Rashawn Wright getting on the floor, coming up with the basketball. Knows that he has Chris Daniels ahead and a little contact. Little contact on the hip. With Jules Kamara coming through there. Looks like a good block shot, but Daniels at the line for two. Daniels a 70% free throw shooter. Georgia number two in the SEC at foul shooting. Well, that will help them coming down the stretches. Now they have gotten to the bonus as Kentucky has been called for a few hand checking fouls their last few possessions. Daniels connects on both. We're tied at 82. Jim Herrick using his timeout. Timeout by the Bulldogs. Kamara thought he had the block. Georgia will take the two free throws. 1.47 to go. Do not turn the dial. This morning, we talk football, hardcore football, the pregame show that's really not a pregame show. You come out and you hit him right in the mouth. When that guy gets rolling, <laughs> nothing stops him. Yeah! He doesn't stop himself. Oh! I'm going to get you, sucker. That guy was a psychopath. <laughs> it's fun, exciting, the show your mom doesn't want you to see. <laughs> NFL This Morning, Sundays on Fox Sports Net. I'm funny. Welcome to the best damn sports store, period. Clean out the aisle six. Go so get that shit out of here. You ready, Jimmy? No. Why pay child support with the pro athlete paternity test? Oh, Demarco Farr. John Sally. John Sally. Comedy commentary highlights the best damn sports show, period. Nowadays, a lot of people are encouraging parents to talk to their kids. Good idea, but I have an even better one. Try listening to your kids. I know sometimes it's hard to get them to talk, but let them know how much you really care about what they're into, what they dream about, what kind of friends they're choosing. Their answers might surprise you and actually bring you closer together. If you don't ask, you'll never know. Tied at 82, 147 to play in the second half. And the magnitude of this game in terms of history, if you're a historian like Barry Booker. I am. 1923, <laughs> Georgia won in Lexington. And then they won again in 1985. That's it. So about 2047, <laughs> yeah, right. 62 years later, Georgia with Jim Herrick, the fourth or the fifth coaching. <laughs> Maybe they come up with their next win. They're trying to buck the trend. Come up with a W in 2002. Barry, Tayshawn Prince has been quiet here in the second half with four points. You try to get him a shot. At least a touch. You see Georgia hanging in because of their three-point shooting. But you want Prince to touch the ball at least. Bogans can't buy a bucket. Cannot buy a bucket. This guy was second in the Southeastern Conference in scoring a year ago. And his point production is just dwindling. He's getting good shots. Open on the wing. Just couldn't get that one down. And now for Georgia. Can they keep possession and get Jarvis Hayes or Ezra Williams a shot? Hayes off the glass. Georgia has 
the lead. And what a great One minute to go. Keith Bogans had the basketball. Georgia had basically turned it over. Bogans trying to bang it off a Georgia player, get possession for the Cats. But Jarvis Hayes ends up with it and gets the deuce. He's at 30 on the night. With each point, it's a new career high. Hawkins misses the jumper. Rebound to Bogans. Has it blocked. Another block. Georgia's got it. 37 seconds to play. A three-second differential. And a foul against Cliff Hawkins. Oh, close. Close call and a tough break for Kentucky. And a huge bucket on the other end for Georgia in a tie basketball game. Less than a minute to play. Jarvis Hayes along the baseline. A little unsure what to do. Just lost the basketball. Bogans had it. You can see Tayshawn Prince call, trying to call a timeout, but Jarvis Hayes ended up with the basketball. And a little trip right here as Rashad Bright has had a tough time with Cliff Hawkins tagging him. Right almost slipped down, but Hawkins did get his feet tangled up with Rashad Wright. Call made and right to the line. A 30-second timeout taken by Kentucky. Georgia with two timeouts remaining. Kentucky has three timeouts. There's 33.6 seconds remaining in this game. Wright is a 78% free throw shooter, and he has improved dramatically from a year ago when he shot 50% from the free throw line. Kentucky trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses to open up the SEC basketball season. The game they lost to Mississippi State was their first opening SEC loss since 1996, 1986. One more time, the difference in the game right now, the bucket by Jarvis Hayes as Bogans can't quite control it. Prince took himself out of the play trying to call the timeout. Jarvis Hayes ended up with possession and an easy basket and now right stepping to the foul line trying to give Georgia a four-point lead with only 33 seconds to play. Right. Knocks down the free throw. Rashad tonight. Had six assists, eight rebounds, five points. Jim Herrick said he brought a Pepperdine team in here when he was coaching at Pepperdine and got thumped pretty good by the Wildcats who were then coached by Eddie Sutton. Down by three. Kentucky doesn't have to have a three right now, but they need a bucket quickly. And Prince has to touch the basketball right now. Hawkins, the runner off the iron. Daniels a rebound. Wright has it. He's fouled by Fitch. And Tayshawn Prince didn't touch it. That's two possessions in a row. The biggest two possessions of the game. You've got the SEC Player of the Year, and Tayshawn is frustrated as he is not getting the basketball at these crucial times when it's most important that he does get it. And Barry, Kentucky only one field goal on the last 642. Well, Georgia was able to gather themselves once again, make some defensive stands. Kentucky in deep trouble, but this is a one and one. Big shot for Rashad right now. Four point edge for Georgia. Four point Georgia lead. Right. Misses. Oh. Here's Damn. Prince. Is it too late? Take shot to the basket. Couldn't get it to go. The follow up. It's good with 4.7 seconds remaining. It's a two-point basketball game. Tayshawn has to bring the basketball up the court just to make sure he gets a chance for Kentucky. The big basket by Cliff Hawkins on the finish as Prince able to drive down the lane. Georgia slipped into a 2-3 zone defense. Prince gets in there but keeps it alive after he doesn't get the shot down. But Georgia had a chance to pull that rebound to really end this game. But Tayshawn Prince got a finger on his Kentucky, really didn't go aggressively after that rebound. Tayshawn Prince and Cliff Hawkins, really the only two there. Keith Bogans coming in late on the rebounding opportunity. Keith Bogans, Keith Bogans, Keith Bogans. 
There's Tayshawn Prince. Frustrated here in the second half. Tayshawn in the second half tonight with just four points. He had 11 at intermission. Keith Bogans, three of 10 tonight. He's 0 for three from behind the arc with six points. Kentucky has hit five of 17 threes. They're shooting 29% from behind the arc, 50% overall. Georgia shooting 54% overall and 43% from behind the arc. Prince just one of four in the second half. And it's uh, been a race from start to finish. The biggest play, Jarvis Hayes on this fluky play. Gave Georgia the lead on this drive to the basket, fumbled the basketball away, but Kentucky can't secure possession. But the Cats aren't done. They're down by two. But Georgia with possession. This will be a one and one opportunity if Georgia does indeed get the basketball inbounds and they get fouled. It'll be a one and one trip to the foul line, so Kentucky will still have a chance if Georgia misses at least one, one of those foul shots to tie it or even win the game if Georgia misses that first foul shot. The other question I have, Rashad Carruth for Kentucky at 13 first half points. Only two here in the second half. Five of seven from the forward field was Rashad, and he's been held in check. Kentucky has just struggled in the second half. They had 53 at halftime. So only 31 so far in the second half. And it's not great Georgia defense that did it. Kentucky had some shots that twirled around the rim and came out. And then Georgia has picked up their defensive intensity in these last few minutes of this ball game. But you remember last year, Georgia or Kentucky went to Madison Square Garden. They lost a nail biter to St. John's to open the season. Then they lost to UCLA in overtime. And there was crisis and panic time for Kentucky losing those first two. And they may drop two in a, two in a row here to start the SEC schedule in this season. We've got more SEC basketball coming your way Saturday. Tennessee's Vincent Yarbrough, one of the premier players in the nation, will lead the Volunteers into Athens, Georgia, to take on Jim Harris Bulldogs. Ezra Williams, Jarvis Hayes will be on hand from Steckman College Museum. 7 o'clock Eastern. Be sure to check the listings for the time in your area. You may see the SEC's leading ball club, the Georgia Bulldogs, if they're able to hold on and win this game. Another timeout taken. They try to figure out what's going to happen over the next 4.7 seconds. Hey, what's your strategy here? Well, Tubby Smith wanted to see the Georgia alignment and also probably take a look at the personnel on the court, trying to figure out who they want to foul and send to the foul line. This will be a pressure one-on-one, -on -one, one and one situation if Georgia does end up at the foul line. So Kentucky trying to check them out, see if they can find something, come up with a with a steal here in this situation. Tubby Smith knows what Georgia is going to do right now, how they're going to align offensively, so he can set his strategy to defend that and work on getting a steal. Georgia's 12 and two starters, their best in five years. The last time they started this well, Tubby Smith was their head coach. It's Georgia basketball, and Prince can't believe it. Good defensive play by Tayshawn Prince trying to reach in, reach around Jarvis Hayes to get possession. A soft bounce pass from Chris Daniels. Tayshawn almost got it. Tony Cole is an excellent free throw shooter. He's back in the game. 1.7 seconds remaining. 1.7. Georgia able to melt nearly three seconds off the clock in that sequence. So Kentucky down to just 1.7 on the clock. Big foul shots here for Tony Cole. A one and one situation. If he misses the first, Kentucky will have to call a timeout and then heave at the length of the court. Tony Cole. Makes it a three-point game. If he makes this, it's over. 
It's over, and the Georgia Bulldogs will win for the first time in Rupp Arena since 1985. As Ezra Williams comes over and says, give us some respect. Ezra earned it this evening, reigning in three-point shots from all over the place. The Georgia Bulldogs come into Rupp Arena, bringing home the victory. Huge surprise. The win is just the third for the Georgia Bulldogs in the history of Georgia basketball. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports.